Hi everyone! Today I wanted to have a chat about a very weird animated video that's been floating around the internet called Evolution Debunked in Under 2 Minutes. Now, since evolution has been firmly demonstrated by genetics, the entirety of the fossil record, tons of transitional species within the fossil record, comparisons between living animals, and the entire field of biostratigraphy, and since it has basically become the bedrock by which we understand just about every concept in biology, to debunk it, you would need some very solid evidence. So, does this video have any very solid evidence? You hear this one a lot. Science has proven evolution, therefore evolution is true. Yes, that is correct. So, what's the point in this video? Since evolution is true and Christians don't believe it, then Christians don't believe science and they aren't rational people. Okay then, let's put this to the test. Do Christians actually not believe in evolution, as this video claims? Well, considering that one of the biggest content creators on evolutionary biology in the entirety of YouTube is Clint Laidlaw, who is openly a Christian, that puts a bit of doubt on that. Considering also that one of the earliest and most prominent proponents of birds being descended from dinosaurs was Bob Backer, who is a vicar, this seems to hold even less weight. According to this survey by Pew Research, around 54% of Christians believe that humans evolved from another species. If we look at the participants in this survey from r slash Christianity earlier this year, we can see that the overwhelming majority of Christians who responded do believe in evolution. With that large 31% block that turns that majority into a minority being the group of people who aren't Christians who just clicked to see the survey results. I think that if this chap is claiming that Christians as a group don't believe in evolution, then he is the one accusing Christians of being irrational, because it is irrational not to believe in evolution. Really? Let's put that claim to the test. First off, evolution in the sense that things change is evident. No rational person disputes that. Therefore, rational Christians believe it. Okay, so what's this video about? We can observe change. But evolution in the sense that life came from non-life and then that life began to randomly generate new genetic information and over time it eventually produced humans is something entirely different and something that quite honestly doesn't hold up against science. Really? Because scientists came to that conclusion using the fossil record, comparative anatomy, and genetic research. You're really going to have to justify this claim with evidence. In other words, evolution in the sense of molecules to man is not scientifically plausible and therefore should not be viewed as scientific fact. Quite honestly, it is in great opposition to science, that is, observational science, the kind of science we can test and repeat and use our five senses to understand. Science demonstrates that over time, living organisms lose genetic information. They don't gain it. That same science demonstrates that life doesn't arise from non-life. Hey, Follow along if you would. Fact one, there is no known observable process by which new genetic information can be added to an organism's genetic code. None. Wow, I guess there's no point in me doing research and fact-checking things for my videos and putting fact-checks in the comments when I make mistakes in my videos if I could always just lie, like this guy just did, explicitly. So first, yes, we know of several mechanisms by which new genetic material can be added into a genome. For example, retroviruses insert their genome into the host cell nucleus in order to get the host to make new retroviruses. This can be incorporated into the host organism's genome and be incorporated into future cells as that cell divides. This can cause cancers, but it can in some rare instances also occur within eggs and sperm. And these instances seemingly aren't actually that rare, as according to this study, around 8% of genes in the human body are the hallmarks of genes which have been inserted into our DNA by retroviruses. So there's one way that you are clearly demonstrably wrong, but 
Do you want another mechanism? Because I can give you another mechanism by which genetic material is added. Now, when genomes don't cross over properly during meiosis, which is the special kind of cell division that creates sex cells, i.e. eggs and sperm, you can often get gene duplication, which adds genetic material through copying. And this additional genetic material can produce phenotypic differences and can also cause more significant changes when, when a mutation occurs in one area that isn't on another. Now, not only can genes duplicate, but duplicated genes, when they mutate, can help an animal evolve new features that it wouldn't otherwise have been capable of evolving. A great example of this is the adhesive toe pads on geckos, which are only present in groups whose ancestors appear to have undergone a duplication in their beta keratin gene, as talked about in these papers, but mostly this one. And when I say that gene duplication can add material, I don't just mean it can add a little bit of genetic material. Sometimes we get the duplication of entire chromosomes worth of material. With different species of, and I'm gonna stick with geckos again, having between 16 and 46 chromosomes. If you don't think that that many extra chromosomes can lead to the possibility for significant evolutionary change, then I don't think you understand genetics or evolution very well. And speaking of things that can happen to DNA, those two things both count as types of mutation. And there are other kinds of mutation as well. Uh, mutations really being those random changes and mistakes that can occur within a gene sequence. With new genetic material added through transcription errors, viral inserts, duplications, or the damaging of DNA due to ionizing radiation causing changes, such as from the sun or from uranium decay in rocks like granites. So we are just one minute into this video, and he has already told one sweeping generalization about Christians not believing in evolution, which doesn't seem to be true for the most part, and one really blatant, outright lie. Let's see how he goes on from here. That pretty much refutes evolution right away because there's no way to go from a fish to an amphibian without adding new information, right? Yes, and that happened. We know that happened. I just explained multiple ways by which we know that that can happen. Heck, lungfish, probably the most similar thing that we have now to our fishy ancestors that first came up onto land, have undergone crazy levels of genome expansion in some lineages relative to others, as discussed in this paper. So, like, yeah, there is no problem here at all. What are you talking about? If living organisms cannot produce new genetic information, how can anything gradually change into something of higher intelligence or form or complexity? That is, how can anything evolve from an amoeba to a man without adding new genetic information? Well, it can't. But we know that new information regularly does get added over the course of evolution, so this is a non-issue? The answer, of course, is that it can't, plain and simple. Are you on drugs? Now, some have speculated and they have imagined all kinds of things and they brought in artists to produce creative renderings based on guesses and they have been successful in telling a very convincing story that humans evolved from ape-like creatures. But those are just drawings, people. They're just stories. Um, y you know paleo art isn't just guesswork, right? Like, it's based on detailed anatomical research, considerable comparison with modern relatives, and fossils with soft material when those are applicable. And paleo art evolves over time to keep up with new discoveries and new findings. It is true that life has never been observed to come from non-life, but since every living thing falls within only three domains of life, the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukaryotes, and that archaea have very similar cell structures to bacteria, and genetic evidence indicates that eukaryotes evolved within the archaea, it's incredibly likely that all life on Earth evolved from a single common ancestor. So maybe abiogenesis, i.e. the creation of life, 
only ever happened once. And maybe that was through the right chemical temperature or pressure conditions in the water. Or maybe it was through a divine spark of life. I don't think that's an irrational conclusion to come to. But no matter what that instant might be, abiogenesis is clearly an exceptionally rare phenomenon and has literally nothing to do with whether or not evolution could happen after it. Whether or not abiogenesis happened through God or through the right chemical conditions, it does not disprove centuries worth of evidence for evolution. So how is this a problem worth talking about? Uh, if people do want me to do a deep dive on abiogenesis, maybe after we finish the roughly like 75 planned videos I already have on the table, I can do that. But what we really observe is humans are humans and apes are apes. Now, if fact one buried evolutionary thinking deep into the Precambrian soil, this next fact, fact two, tosses so much sediment on it that not even the greatest team of paleontologists with the latest subterranean gizmo could dig up the remains. Check this out. Never, again, never has it been observed that life can come from non-life. So here are two major scientific evidences against evolution. I reiterate for clarity, life has never been observed to come from non-life, and there is no known, observable process by which new genetic information can be added to the genetic code of an organism. So molecules demand evolution doesn't really make scientific sense. Yet we are all here, and life is all around us in various forms. Although evolution cannot account for this, the Bible can. The Bible reveals that the all-powerful, all-knowing, supernatural God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, and all life according to its kinds, that is, each with its own set of genetic information. Okay, so if all life was independently created according to its kind, as in your very, very literal interpretation of Genesis, why do we, as independently created humans, share around 96% of our genome with a chimpanzee and around 60% of our genome with a chicken, <laughs> including genes for important immune response proteins like interleukin-26. If God created each species independently, then why do genetics and the fossil record all indicate that we are related? And why do all vertebrates have very similar anatomy? Why do all arthropods have so many similar anatomical traits? Why do we share so many of our genes with fruit flies? So, again, what the Bible reveals makes sense of what we see and understand. Evolution does not. Enough said. Well, that was a big waste of time. He presented no evidence, debunked nothing, and just lied. I can do that too. I'm a cisgender manly man who likes pumping iron. That was scary. Now on to our weekly game of Rockman. Huge thank you to everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Big shout out to my Dilophosaurus tier patrons, Ours and Geneva, as well as a huge shout out to my Radiolarian tier patrons, Vincent Place, Glenn Collins, and Jean and Eric Feenstra. If you would like to be named at the end of this video and help support me as I get my life together and keep creating and hopefully improving the quality of what I'm creating for you guys, then there is a link to my Patreon in the comments below. Know that you can also donate to help the channel on Ko-fi. All of your help is massively appreciated and it means a huge amount to me, especially right now. Uh, as many of you know, I have not exactly been going through the best time and it, it really helps. By the way, what do you think of my new little studio area? Um, this is my micropaleontology microscope where I look for forearms. Uh, here are just some dinosaur toys. Uh, I won this at the arcade the other day, but I really like it. I have called it Dinky. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. I have finished recording the Jordan Peterson video, but it won't be out for probably several weeks because editing it is taking a very long time and I just have not got the time to work on it and it's going to be an extremely long video. So I hope you appreciate it when it is out um, and thank you once again.